Boy, what a battle that was. We lose. You, you're the leader of this band, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'll resist you no further. Take me with you or execute me here. I care not. But my companions, would you let them go, please? No, I won't allow it. Huh? I won't let you take more of him. Uh, stick back, little one. You were not supposed to expose him. If you want more of him, you have to kill me first. Your? Yes, he is a bear child. I claimed him when he was little more than an infant. He has nothing to do with us subhumans. Stop lying! I'm here because I want to be. Who's the leader of the Lagoon's Emancipation Army? I am. You're a big jerk, Warren. Trying to cover for everyone and get yourself killed? I won't allow it. Little one. Hey, I don't care who the real leader is. The Lagoon's who calls himself subhuman is protecting the kidnapped bear who claims to lead a Lagoon's Emancipation Army? Do I have that right? Because if I do, I have absolutely no idea what any of you are talking about. Would someone please tell me what is going on here? Well, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get to it. All right, please go over that again. It's been customary throughout Benyon's history to keep Lagoos as slaves. That's right. But that's in the past now. 20 years ago, all slavery was outlawed and all Lagoos were freed. And as far as the general public is concerned, that is exactly what happened. So that's a portion of society. There's a portion of society that willingly breaks the law. Commoners obey, but there are still many Lagoos slaves in the homes of nobles. Morum and I brought this to the attention of the senators, but they would not listen. That's why we gathered other fighters. We break into the homes where, where slaves are kept and help them escape. Of course, the nobles can't let this be known publicly, so they brand us thieves and turn us into wanted outlaws. Alright, I think I understand your motives, but you're not going to solve the basic problem this way. We know that, but we can't give up and leave them in chains. We can't and won't. Do you mind if I try to help? Huh? This sort of bear behavior is something that's been bothering me. I think there may be something that I can do. Misala, stop this foolishness. Where are you taking me? Tell me. It's only a little farther. I'll tell you once we've arrived, just as I promised. I left no word with Tabarn. If I had known we were coming this far, I would have left a message. Here we are. This is what I wanted to show you. Look below you, Rayson. What do you see? What, what is this? How is this possible? What happened here? This is Serenus? Is this what you're trying to tell me? This Carlos Vista. These cracks and withered branches, these lifeless trees. This is my forest? The ancient tongue. It's been many years since I last heard it. You can still speak it. The voice of the forest is still. Why? How did this... It's been like this since our plan's been gone. The area near the entrance is especially bad. They used fire. Most of the trees are dead. Unforgivable. How? How can they do things like this? Cursed humans. What did this forest do? What did my clan do? Humans hold all lagoos in contempt, and in the same way, they hold all of nature in contempt as well. They think everything exists for their pleasure and betterment. They are beneath contempt. Misala, it appears that I have misjudged you. I called you a groveling toad. <coughs> groveling toady to humans and labeled you a traitor. I was overly harsh. I apologize. Not to worry. I engage in occasional commerce with humans. That much is true. The more pressing issue is the growing darkness. You can return to Phoenicus tomorrow, can you not? I'm certain that some noble has a villa in this area. At this time of year, it is almost certain to be empty. I suggest we borrow it for the evening. You would sleep in a human building? Think about it. Bird folk like you and I have no night vision whatsoever. If we were discovered by humans, they would surely overwhelm and capture us, right? I see your point. Very good. I'll go stumble around until I find something to eat. Please, make yourself comfortable. Nisala. Yes? Thank you. For everything you've done. I, I appreciate it. Don't be ridiculous. We're old friends, are we not? Right you are, old friend. 
Is everything in place? Yes, that Duke Tennis cannot sit still. He's literally quivering with anticipation. It's not pretty. I bet it isn't. Just make sure that mountain of, su of suicide stays hidden. If Brazen has so much as a glimpse of his bulk, he will take wing. Understood. Now, time to put up the finishing touches. This too I do ra I do to raise up kill us. Brazen, please don't judge me too harshly. That being said, I'm sure you will. Oh well, such is life. Enjoy your new one, old friend. Double cross. Or so they say. Chapter 16, The Atonement. What is this? Who are you? What have you done with Nesala? Oh, oh, this is something everyone should see. Be no doubt, I gaze upon the last living wonder of the Sardis royalty. Those golden locks witness how they gather in the morning sun and multiply its brilliance. The gentle luster of those ardent wings manifest proof of royalty as if surely it shows I am alive. Magnificent, absolutely magnificent. A true work of art wrought in flesh and feather. All this beauty, mine. The fortune I pay the Raven King it seems like. It seems like pittance to go into this treasure. What? And I saw sold me to you? <laughs> you are exquisite, even in rage. Now, if you behave yourself, I'll grant you a life of luxury. And, oh, my nose, my beautiful nose. <laughs> Bishop Oliver, you winged freak, you'll pay for that. No, you mustn't harm him. You mustn't ruffle a single feather of those gorgeous wings. My beauty, you mustn't be frightened. In time, you will come to see how kind and charitable a master I can be. This is madness! Oh, so frightening. How delicious. I fear that we must now be separated for a short while. Loyal servants, attend my words. We must not raise a hand on this one. Prepare his meals with care and do not disturb his rest. I would not see his countenance narrowed by displeasure. Herons, you see, are such delicate things. And then, at the proper time, yes, the proper time, when will it be? I say to you, those haughty senators, no Elke look down on me. Let the downer noses at me for the last time. I shall sow them all. Oh, but I must have a great stage. One where none can fail to see me. The Cernus worlds are creatures of legend, and when I arrive with one at my side, I can hardly wait to see to curse his face. <laughs> Nisala, you wretch! Curse your eyes! How dare you do this to me! I brought him. Well done, Ike. I shall see that you are well rewarded. Where's your usual, your usual entourage? I only see two of your holy guard. Oh, there was some sort of disturbance. I think they're clearing away the rabble. But on to business. Is that one now the ringleader of the thieves? Why, he's nothing but a child. Has he offered up any kind of defense for his deplorable actions? We are no thieves. We are trying to free the lagoons that these filthy aristocrats hold in captivity. What matter of absurd fairy tale is this? In the year Benyon 624, Apostle Misaha, my honored grandmother, emancipated every last Lagoo slave. In accordance with her law, today there is not a single slave to be found in all the Bayon Empire. You lie! Countless, uh, countless noble houses even now keep Lagoos as servants or, in a, or entertainment, or worse. And the Senate. Those vast windbags grant, grant tacit approval by doing nothing. That's enough. I told you to keep a cool head. But... Ike, why ever would you bring such an ill-mannered rogue to meet me? What is it you're planning? If anyone's planning something, it's you. Really? And what could you possibly mean by that? Your last mission showed us the slave trade, and but now you put us in contact with an underground emancipation group. From the very beginning, I found this whole arrangement a little odd. You have more vassals than you can use, yet you hire us for these missions? Your motivations have me puzzled. Oh, I see. And have you solved this puzzle of yours? You want to expose the depravity of the inner circles of power, but you don't want the general public to know that the majority of the Senate is involved in slavery. I didn't think I thought you were as untutored as a wild monkey. You're actually quite right. I didn't think it all, I didn't figure it all out by myself. I have companions whom I trust with my life. They helped. Hey, hold it. What in the world are you talking about? Would someone like to explain this to me? The Apostle is aware of the loose slavery. On top of that, it appears she intends to do something about this problem. Are you serious? I am. However, whether I succeed or fail depends largely on what you do next. So be it. I think it's time you told us about the next job you have lined up for us. I've received reports that Bishop Oliver, the Duke of Tannis, is something, something suspicious. Duke Tannis is a villain near the woods of Sadness, go there and return with irrevocable proof of whatever he is doing. 
If you succeed in this, I promise to support your Princess Inizio with all the power at my command. We'll bring back whatever information it is you're looking for. Be ready for us. Oh boy. <clears throat> Morn. Little one. How, how was it? Were you treated roughly? Did they attempt to punish you? No, it was nothing. And the Apostle? I thought she'd be some mean old hag, but she's just a kid. Really, she's even shorter than I am. Little one, you must lower your voice and watch your tongue. What? Why? Rest easy, Morum. Everyone in this room is with me. The Apostle has no ears here. That is good. Morum? Speaking ill of the Apostle here is considered treasonous. Keep it up, and they'll kill you, or threaten to. What? Little one, while we are here, please choose your words with more care than you have shown. I beg of you. Oh, right. Right. I understand. For Lagoos, you seem to know more about the court etiquette here than my fellow Bayor Tormod. <sighs> That's because cause I don't know much about any of this stuff. That's all. It is no matter, little one. Like, the reason I am familiar with the customs of the Banyan nobles is I myself was once a slave. What? Oh no. For generations, my family served as slaves to one house. They were wealthy and powerful, senators all. As a child, I was raised never to question my station as a slave. From the day that I was born, the most grueling physical labor was as natural as breathing. I knew nothing else. To ensure we were liked by our masters, we were drilled into the etiquette of polite society until it became second nature. We were slaves. We did what we could to live as strong as we could. The most important thing was not to incur the wrath of our masters. If we displeased them, we were punished. If we were lucky, we were beaten. If we were unlucky... Morm, that's enough! I'm sorry, Lord Ike. If a former slave like myself is present, all of you will be judged, scorned, and looked down upon. I came here to ask if you would take care of something for me. I would have you take care of the little one. Why would you say such a thing? You were born a Lagoo slave, and you're not allowed to be free. That's not right. That's why we promised each other we'd change all that. We made a promise. Lagoos like Bayard would build homes and plant fields. Families would live together in peace and freedom. That's the world we dreamed of. That's a dream that belongs to us as former Lagoo slaves. We don't need the help of another Bayard like you. What? Little one. Does it really warrant that much concern? Huh? Since I first arrived here in Benyon, it's something that's been bothering me. If you're born into a noble house, you're a noble. If your parents are slaves, you're a slave. Do you think it's do you think a person's worth is decided at the moment of their birth? That's I can't understand a country where that passes for normal. I just can't. Those don't sound like the words of someone looking working for Princess Crimea. Princesses are princesses because they're born into royal families, right? Are you going to deny that? No, you're right. Valencia, she is a princess. I don't think we've treated her with more respect than any other employer we've had, but... <laughs> Funny. We've addressed her as princess the entire time, but I've never really considered what it meant. From where I stand, I think you've been blessed. You were born a Bayork and raised in a country with a lenient social structure. That's an enviable life. It's so hard. I... No matter how hard I try, I'll never fully understand your pain. But listen, I didn't treat Alicia any differently after I learned of her heritage. It's not going, I'm not going to think of you or treat you differently just because I used to be a slave. It's not going to happen. You're you. And I'm free to think of it that way if I want, right? Morm, there's nothing anyone can do about your past. About the burdens you carry. And I know I'm not, I don't know everything that's going on, but you shouldn't be trying to push Tormod away. He's dedicated to you, and being with you is his choice. It's part of his freedom. I see now. I will go and fight him. If meeting those in the temple is uncomfortable, I can go and bring him back. What do you think? No, I can do it. I have a good nose. Tracking the young ones sent will avoid other pay is an easy task. I see. Ike, I want... I mean, never mind. May our friendship be true and enduring. I share your sentiment. Our troop will have you for as long as you wish. Man, that's heavy. What the... Um, who are you? How long have you been a member of my troop? I joined after the Battle in the Sands. My name is Stefan. I apologize for not introducing myself earlier. Why are you here? In part, it's because I'm curious, but mostly it's the guiding hand of fate that has led me to you. Huh? In the desert, I watched the dance of your sword. You have a unique style, but it is incomplete, filled with hesitation. You recently lost your teacher, no? Uh, 
Luckily, your foundation is quite strong, which is why I can be of service. Your technique. How powerful will it be when perfected? I would like to know. Who are you? You can learn the dance of blades from me without knowing my history, can you not? Wait, say you. Let your heart decide. Teach me. I understand. If you can help me perfect my technique, I will gladly accept an invitation to learn from you. Then prepare yourself. Come, attack me with all your strength. If you accept this invitation, you get this! Alright, we get some more, uh... A couple of more supports to read. That's cool. Tormod uh, is the third part of the Mage Trio. He specializes in fire. And then Morm's uh, Animal Gate starts at zero. I'm not sure I'll actually use that Demi Band, but we'll see. Here. 15 to 17. I can actually blast Jane Marcia right now, I think. We'll see. Ooh, Pure Water's for sale. I'll grab a couple. Pure Water's just like Ward's Dave, but anyone can use it. Iron Blade. And light magic. Do I do I have some already? I do. So that means I did talk about it before. My mistake. You know what? Sure. I'm gonna distribute some BXP real quick. When you're at base, you can um, you can sort of RNG abuse the uh, the uh, BXP like this. So if you get a level up that you're not too happy with, you can reset the game and try again. Let's give you one, real quick. I think I'm gonna use that Master Seal now. Strength, Speed, Defense, perfect. HP, Speed, Luck, Resistance. HP, Skill, I'll take it. HP skill. Get you to level 21. Shoop. More stats. Pegasus Knights prone into Falcon Knights. They, uh, well, they're stronger all around, of course, and they get access to swords. Pretty cool.
and now to turn this fighter into a warrior. can use bows for a secondary weapon and bow warrior is a lot of fun like really and truly Now we've met both of the requisites for for the uh, other support conversation we'll be getting later. Uh, what else is I gonna do? Oh yeah, might as well read these quick. We're gonna continue these little sagas, as it were. Incredible! You hit the target 26 times in a row. Well, my goal is 30. That's a lofty goal, and you came close. You're becoming an impressive archer, Wolf. But I can't afford to miss a single shot in battle. The man who taught me how to fire a bow told me at once. I can't be happy with just 26 hits. You push yourself hard, Wolf. That's admirable. Aren't you strict with yourself, Marsha? Hmm? What, me? <laughs> of course, of course. I'm stricter than a poached egg on toast. Be firm with yourself and others. That's what the first officer in my old unit told me. But you're still... a child? I am not a child. Those days ended the instant I took my first life. I suppose you're right. You've had to grow up fast traveling with a group of hardened sales sorts like this. Do you worry about me because I'm young? Well, sure. Who wouldn't? Well, stop it. I can take care of myself. I've grown strong. True enough. Sorry if I underestimated you. Now for you. Oscar! Hi, Kieran. Still hanging in here, huh? I can't take it anymore. Come back! Rejoin the, pro the Proud Brotherhood of the Crimean Knights. This is sudden. As a former Crimean Knight, surely you have some sense of loyalty. What say you? Rejoin! For King and Country! The homeland is in danger, and any who, would, who used to be crying at night should come rushing to her aid! You have a point, and I am glad I'm able to help rebuild the homeland, even if it's just as a mercenary. I'm not here to make you glad, I'm here to convince you to be a knight again! You're not fulfilling your allegiance to sweet Crimea by being a mercenary? How can you sleep at night? I love Crimea, but I'm happy here. I want to serve Ike as a member of the Grail Mercenaries, forever. Darn! Why? What draws you guys to such life? What could make the mercenary life so appealing that, you're that you sell your loyalty to our glorious homeland of Crimea? Aha! Could it be the nice fat salary? That's it! I remember you saying that you needed money! Oh! Loose lips sink ships! If I wanted money, I would have stayed with the Crimean Knights. I only get about half that now. What? Ah! Wake up, man! Can't you see you're being duped? Honor! Fortune! Glory! It could be yours! I doubt it. But I say, you're hopeless! Who's hopeless? <laughs> Let's see now. Oh yeah. Mastery skills for Falcon Knights and Wyvern Widers is stun. Um, yeah. You deal damage to an enemy and uh, immobilize them for one turn. It's okay. Warriors get Colossus. Uh, increased damage when, when your own con exceeds enemies. It's kind of... Uh, yeah. Use it if you like it, but yeah. Wait, where did that? I'm gonna throw this away, and I'm gonna give you another, give you a new sword. Might as well pump it up, right? I guess we're not doing that then. Okay. You can be the... Um, you know what? Put simply, uh... Plum. Plum. See? Yeah. Whoops. 
I wish I could equip that, that'd be funny. But, yeah. <laughs> Give this to you. I'm over at it. Grab that. I think that'll do for now. See you in the next video.